King of Sports. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Welcome everyone, it is week two of the Strong Style Evolve Tour right here on New Japan Strong. I'm Ian Riccoboni, joined by Matt Raywald once again. And Matt, what a night of action we have in front of us, including a New Japan Strong debut, Andy Brown. But to me, it's getting a little overshadowed by that uh, six foot eight athlete that stands across the ring from him. Hikaleo, there's been a lot of questions up in the air where his allegiance lies. I was there when the Bullet Club turned their backs on G.O.D., the literal blood and family of Hikaleo. We're gonna see if that plays into his emotions at all in this big matchup tonight. Well, speaking of things that happened in Impact, you can't turn on Impact without noticing one of the greatest athletes in the world today, Josh Alexander. He's stepping back into a New Japan Strong ring to take on the Alpha Wolf, Carl Fredericks. This is, this is a bit of a dream match. Two of the, the best conditioned athletes in the world going one-on-one -on -one for the first time. There's nobody on this planet, I think, who has the work rate quite of the walking weapon, but Carl Fredericks has been on fire since I've been watching him here in New Japan Strong, coming out of that LA Dojo fight team. I'm really looking forward to this one and a heck of a tag team bout. We're gonna see Eddie Kingston returning to New Japan Strong teaming with Fred Rosserman, who's been in contention for that Strong Championship, taking on two young and hungry athletes in Daniel Garcia and Fred Yehai. You gotta love this kind of contrasting style. So you got these veterans who've been in this business for so long, have so much skill, but the young fire and hunger of Garcia and Yehai you know this is going to be a good clash. Should be a heck of an encounter. And our main event, this is the first time ever in the history of the U.S. of J Open Challenge that Jay White knows his opponent coming in to the bout. And it's going to be answered by the man that mentored him in Ring of Honor that he's clashed with in Impact. I'm talking about Chris Sabin. That's right. I mean, we know how dangerous Jay White is when he doesn't know his opponent, mm -hmm. let alone when he does. Not only that, this is a rematch from WrestleCon weekend. So he's had plenty of time to learn, scout, and improve. Chris Saban is one of the best in the world. This is gonna be a hell of a match. Let's waste no more time. Let's get to the action here. Strong Style Evolve starts now. Opening match, 15 minutes, Welcome everyone to week two of the Strong Style Evolve Tour. Coming to you from St. Petersburg, Florida. Ian Riccoboni, Matt Raywald and a verified Hall of Famer, Tiger Hattori, a legend here in New Japan. Yeah, welcome, absolutely Tiger. Absolutely welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me for Florida. My second hometown, I used to live here. Really? Oh, Tampa. It's like a homecoming for you here. Yes. That's awesome. So much. But from homecomings to first comings, the right. debut here in New Japan Pro Wrestling from one Andy Brown. Andy Brown is a man that has made his name on the championship wrestling from Atlanta and Championship Wrestling from Hollywood television programs. <laughs> Tiger Andy is very high energy, calls himself the Thick Daddy. Yeah, I look like Big Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> he is indeed. Brings a lot of swagger, a lot of attitude to the ring too. But he will have his hands full tonight in our opening contest. He is facing a man whose father you know very well. Oh. So Hikaleo, the oh. man we are about to see. You, you've known his, his father since he was 16 years old, isn't that right, Tiger? Yeah, Haku. Haku, that's right. I know four families. Haku was in, first I saw him, he was 16 years old 16. in Hawaii. Wow. Father, now is the biggest, young, youngest brother. This, right? Yes, the youngest child. I think that this guy is the most potential for the. Is that right? Yeah, two other brothers. Yes. He's the biggest one. 100% Hikaleo is the largest of his brothers, even though he is the youngest. The sky, I mean, quite literally, <laughs> is the limit. 
for Hikaleo. And, and you've seen it in Impact, Matt. We've seen it in New Japan. He's kind of caught in the crossfire at this moment and any given moment. His brothers unceremoniously it sort of been excommunicated, at least from the, the quote unquote American wing of the Bullet Club. At this point. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I think so too. He, uh, big mind, you know, he doesn't know what to do, but all his brothers, Tama, the teens. Gee, that's right. I don't know, same groups. I don't know, more he independent. We yeah. will see, I mean, as of right now, we know Hikileo. <laughs> see, you know, to hear the music, he saw his entrance video, he is representing Bullet Club. But as you mentioned, Ian, it was Jay White and the Good Brothers who kind of unceremoniously ejected G.O.D., the Gorillas of Destiny, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, out of the Bullet Club. That is the literal blood, the brother, the family of Hikaleo. But as we know, as they always say, BC Bullet Club for life. Well, we're gonna see what Andy Brown brings to the table here is a Connor Novo type, immediate leverage advantage for Hikaleo, standing well at six feet, eight inches tall. He's got the reach, he's got the height, but I mean, as we mentioned earlier, Andy Brown, I mean, he, he's no, yeah, <laughs> he's big. He got the size man. too, yeah. Maybe not as tall, but big. And Hikaleo, every bit as strong as Andy Brown. And that's one thing Andy Brown, he, he knew what he was signing up for. He usually has the strength advantage. He usually is the stronger of his opponents, but Hikaleo at 6'8". Ooh, he's really filling wow. out, too. You'd be a fool if you, uh, you didn't do your homework on the Tongan <laughs> Terror here. Into the corner. Tiger, what's the one thing you like most about Hikaleo? What's the one thing that sticks I out? I don't know. It's uh, Haku, the big families, but yeah. he's the youngest one. Most big guy than the most. He has a good technique. You can see that he was young, starting brother the T and the, you know, Tama. Mm -hmm. And the father got, you know, they give them so much good education for the professional wrestling. That's true. I mean, growing up in that family, how do you not right. have a good education in pro wrestling? Hikaleo's learned so much so fast not only from his family, but being in the ranks of Bullet Club, that, that teaches you some hard lessons real quick. And right in front of us now, Andy Brown, Hikaleo into the barricade. And I Two admire miles. Andy Brown's strategy at this point, just Three taking miles. it to the outside. Oh, oh my. Oh, boy. Oh boy. <laughs> yes. That had effects throughout Six. the Coliseum here. Now, I learned long ago, uh, sitting at this New Japan commentary table, to oh. keep, watch my knees, because you never know when a fight <laughs> like this will break out. Watch a TV show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, as broadcasters, oh. we're, we're encouraged to watch the monitor, but you got to keep your eyes. Uh oh, we're at thir 13. You got to keep your 14. eyes everywhere. Wow. And we get a 20 count here in New Japan. As That's right. 16. As Hikaleo now gets Andy in, and now Hikaleo breaks the count. And it was uh, Andy Brown on the outside, who was kind of the aggressor in that situation, quickly turned around in the favor of Hikaleo, though. Oh! And Andy Brown, a little bit more of a veteran than Hikaleo is. Got a couple more years on him, a little more seasoning, so he's going to have to use that knowledge and experience to his oh. advantage. Sticking and moving here, I like this. Charging oh. in. Yeah, very good. Speed for the big guy. Oh, clearing the way. Off the ropes. Andy Brown oh. goes downtown. And the crowd really reacting to Andy Brown. Hey, you see a big man like that flying through with that almost face wash like kick. And here a big senton onto the Tongan. It's the leg, two. And I, I like the strategy there, going for the pinfall, getting a heat check, seeing where Hikaleo's at in the match. That's right. Tiger, are you surprised Andy Brown is, has captivated yeah, this crowd Yeah, very right much. Now. So much power. Oh! Oh, my. Can't pause too much with Hikaleo, though. You've got a monster like that down. you got to keep him down. Wow! Ooh. Big knee under the jaw. Oh, 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 we could see an upset here. A Huge. shocker. Oh, oh, but just a one count. Yeah, he could believe it. <laughs> yeah. I can't either. He is shocked. A 
Superman to the back of the head. Here on the second week of Strong Style Evolved, Ian Riccavani, Matt Raywall, Tiger Hattori, the legend here in our opening contest. Andy Brown looking for upset special against Hikaleo. Oh, 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 oh. oh boy. Pop up punch from Bullet Club's biggest. And he brings him back to his feet to send him off the ropes. Oh. Huge power slam. Buzz Sawyer style with that snap. Yeah, look like the same move, but the big man. Yeah. Wow. Can you imagine all this while we're on the road here. Huge choke slam to Windy City Riot. And this could be it. Two. That's Three. it. Boy. And what a victory for Hikaleo. <laughs> We know there will be a clash. The challenge has been issued with Bullet Club and the United Empire. We don't quite know who will be on the Bullet Club team yet. Could we see Hikaleo suit up for Bullet Club? It, it could be a wise move from Chicago. Make sure you check that out on Fight TV. But tonight, here at Strong Style of All, Hikaleo fired the last shot at Andy Brown. Oh. oh. <laughs> well, Tiger, we want to thank you so much for joining us. We yeah, I'll be you. back. Thank you. Oh, thank Absolutely. you so much. An honor to have you on the call on this one. Fans, coming up next, a huge confrontation. Josh Alexander takes on Carl Fredericks. When the cards for the Strong Style Evolve Tour were announced, one name jumped out at me, Matt. It's, it's a guy I'm professionally jealous of you for being able to call his matches. The and walking weapon once again makes his way into a new Japan strong ring. And for me, this is my first time being ringside to call Ooh. one of Josh Alexander's bouts, but I am a fan. I'm on the Josh Alexander bandwagon. <laughs> Former Impact World Champion, and it would not shock me in the least if he becomes once again the Impact World Champion. Well, he has a future date with the current Impact World Champion Moose at Rebellion on April 23rd. And he's had a hell of a couple of months in getting back to that. But right now, he tests his skills as he always does to the highest degree. And he brings it here to New Japan to do just that. And this is a young man that I met when he joined the LA Dojo here in New Japan. I saw this man break in literally from setting up the ring and being a young boy here in the New Japan system. And I watched proudly as he competed in Japan, as he became a challenger for the Open Weight Strong Championship. And now the man known as the Alpha Wolf, Carl Fredericks, is trying to level up his game by continuing to fight the best the world of wrestling has to offer. And this match will assuredly be one to remember. <laughs> Fredericks in great physical condition, had an interesting bout in Hollywood, California on short notice. Stepped in for Gabriel Kidd, who we hope is doing well. And on about 30 minutes notice, took on Christopher Daniels, put himself in there against one of the best. That's why they always say, always have your gear. If you're around, always be ready to go, always be ready to fight. Carl Fredericks, that's that LA Dojo, that's that Shibata training coming into play. But with some good notice here, we're seeing one of the, the kingpins, one of the tops of the class of Impact Pro Wrestling take on. Arguably the leader of the LA Dojo, 
which has become more of a fight team, a fight squad as of late. Absolutely do. It's not too long, Carl Frederick said in an interview, at a time in his life and time in his career when he had nothing, as when he turned to the LA Dojo, asked Shibata for an opportunity and was given it and has since turned his career and life around. So he owes everything to New Japan Pro Wrestling and that LA Dojo. See a great exchange of wrist locks here. Alexander, you know it better than almost anybody, Matt. He will try and wear you down with just technical precision. I mean, he is a technical wizard, not only that strong as they come, but a grappler extraordinaire to be sure, in the vein of many Canadian greats. See a side headlock here. Fredericks looking to break out of it with the head scissor attempt. Doesn't go anywhere then. Now the grip, the grip of Josh Alexander is a lot harder to break than you might think. There's he wrenches back on that side headlock. And that nice tight S grip. Take a look at the hands there. And trying to get back to a vertical base is Carl Fredericks. Shots to the midsection there. And it's not just the actual style of pro wrestling Josh Alexander employs. No, it's not just simply that he is that catch style, submission style wrestler. It's the intensity with which he does it that sets him apart. And right now, Carl Fredericks trying to match that intensity. Certainly is doing a great job right now. Off the ropes, Carl Fredericks. Oh! Whoa! Clears the ropes, sticks the landing. Full impact on Josh Alexander. Fredericks sending Alexander back into the ring. Wasting no time at all. Sensing opportunity gets a one count there. What a victory it would be for Carl Fredericks to take down one of the pro wrestling world's biggest, hottest stars right now. Oh! Like you mentioned, he'll be competing for the Impact World Championship. Ooh! That's right, April 23rd at the Rebellion pay-per-view has his chance to regain that championship. He is uber focused, more focused than I've ever seen him! Just like he is right now. And whoever's across the ring from him, which in this case is Carl Fredericks. And make no mistake about it, we talk we talk about Carl Fredericks oftentimes we we use the word youth, we use the word experience. He's been building the experience. He has been a championship contender here on New Japan Strong. So you're seeing really two of the top contenders. Yeah, absolutely. Make, make no mistake, Carl Frederick is, is no kid out here, right? He, he's no young lion anymore. He is making his career right now. He is just looking for some of those huge opportunities, those huge chances, those big, point, perfect victories that he needs to get to that next level. And Alexander, that's one thing I've always liked about Alexander in the matches I've watched. He doesn't take his opponents for granted. I, I was, we were talking before we went on the air. Did we think that, that maybe this was a trap game ahead of his match against Moose? But Josh Alexander proving that he has taken Frederick seriously. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Two. And that he is ready to engage in combat with Fredericks. Not, not to borrow, you know, Fred Rosser's phrase here or anything, but Josh Alexander is of that same ilk, that, that no days off kind of mentality is every day. You, whether you train, you fight, you wrestle, you get better every single day. And, and look at the, the knuckles and the pressure point under the arm there into the oblique, that subtle movement. And now, oh, and there you go. And yeah. locking the hands with both the leg and the arm. An unforced error, maybe an unknown error for Carl Fredericks. The way Alexander can trap you. Yeah, you gotta be careful sometimes with, with who you try to escape. If you try to throw an elbow, try to throw a kick to escape a hold, they might just grab it and tie you up like a pretzel. Yeah. But all the credit to Carl. Yeah, he is not, he is not giving up at this point, even though Alexander in control. He is staying in. It has been pretty firm. Josh Alexander, most of this match. A couple of flurries here from Carl Fredericks, but he is all oh fight. And it's guys like Alexander, like Jonathan Gresham, like Brian Danielson that seem to have an answer for everything. And that's where Alexander's been fighting out of right now. Fredericks, some frustration trying to use it to just power through, but instead, it's Alexander again with another answer. You gotta look out for 
with Josh Alexander is he's one of these athletes that just does not seem to have the empty reader on his gas tank. He can go, go, go. He doesn't seem to get tired. Oh. He doesn't seem to wear out. Oh, it just like that, turns around a potential suplex situation into one of his own. I even thought from the front face lock, Fredericks might have been looking for manifest destiny. But whatever was happening there, <laughs> Alexander said, no way, no how. And confidently, oh, telling Fredericks, no, no, not today. This is not your day. Oh. And look at that. Back to that Shibata meditative state. That uh, mindset, that willingness to take the BD, give me some more. Yes, sir, I want another, because I'm not going down. Not today, not a strong style of all. Frederick trying to power up, get back to his feet. It's Alexander who continues the onslaught of the chops across the exposed and, and, and reddening chest of Fredericks. Oh. Fredericks firing back. The fight does not quit. And Carl Fredericks into the corner, follows in, big kick in the knee. This is the momentum he needs. Keep up this kind of train of offense. Shots across the jaw, sending Alexander down into the corner. Oh, and there, there, and that, that is for pride right there. That is him trying to get himself mentally psyched back into this match. Well, he has been firmly in the control of Josh Alexander for much of this matchup, man. He is frustrated. Time to take the ammo out of the clip of the walking weapon. Fredericks now in control for the first time in a long time. Hip toss. Nice hip toss slam there. Ooh, the signature scissor elbow. Two. Just a two count there, and how quickly the fortunes have turned here for Carl Fredericks. That's all you need in pro wrestling sometimes is that one opening, that one chance to turn things around. Oh, but. Speaking of turning it around, catches Fredericks now, gets him off the ropes, has him off. Spine buster! Ooh, huge spine buster. Turning him over and now looking to lock in an STF, and he's got it. Certainly does. Has the hands at the eye line right now. Not only, not only wrenching back on the neck of Josh Alexander, that surgically repaired neck, but impairing his vision, but he does manage to get to the ropes. And and this might be a different side of Fredericks. You know, we saw a little bit of an edge against Daniels. He, he held on pretty late. You don't normally see that with Fredericks. You usually see a, click, a quick, clean break. Sometimes rules are meant to be pushed. They are meant to be bent. You got to push yourself to your limits as well as your opponent. Alexander now on the apron here. Shot to the midsection, looking to the outside. Ominous whoa, sign. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fredericks high up in the air. Fredericks holding on, though. Into the corner. Sizing Alexander up. Nobody home. Looking for the face. Oh, and just a stiff right hand there oh, to God. the face of Fredericks. Oh. No, 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 no. Oh, God! Oh. The spine onto the apron of the ring. And it's Alexander looking to capitalize. Oh my God! That flying low cross body, we've seen him do many, many times before. Into the already damaged spine. But you see there, Josh Alexander has turned this one around, but he is not left unscathed. Bleeding from the mouth there from the offense of Carl Fredericks. Sending Fredericks in. Is Alexander. The signs of battle, you're absolutely right, Matt. Manifesting in the mouth of Alexander. Who oh. connects with a big headbutt off the top? Could it be? Leg. Two, and that's go. So I thought, close, but there, here's the ankle lock. Uh, Josh Alexander, and if this gets locked in, he's finished so many matches with this recently. He can break your ankle if he wants to. And that hand to wrist grip. Allows him to get it in extra tight. Carl Fredericks trying to fight his way out of it. Fighting with everything he's got, but look at the. Oh, oh God. 
Ooh. Alexander did not take kindly to the fight. Frederick's head in the middle of that ankle lock. Open oh. hand. Fredericks is fearless, locking eyes with Alexander. Eye to eye. Testing each other's fortitude. Staring into each other's souls. Wondering what they have to do to emerge victorious. Oh, and this is damn pro wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. Connect. Pushing another human being to their limit. Alexander delivers. Wow, overhand by Fredericks. And an exchange here. No man landing two in a row yet. On spaghetti legs in the center of the ring. Sweat, spit, blood flying. And Fredericks delivers the European uppercut. Looking to light up the walking weapon. Show him he is not someone to be stepped over here in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Thrust kick caught, thrust kick caught. Back elbow. Pele oh. caught, Pele caught by Alexander. Back and to the ankle lock. Back to the ankle lock. Beautiful counter by the walking weapon. But Fredericks is still in this. Rolling through, sending Alexander into the corner. Boot to the face, catches Fredericks. Oh! The back and forth, both wrestlers somehow still on their feet, but wobbly legs. Oh, planting him on the apron. Fredericks here. European uppercut delivers. Alexander draped over that top rope. Fredericks! Oh! Springboard drop kick! Plants the walking weapon. It almost looked even like a double stomp to the draped Josh Alexander, but either way, Fredericks into the cover here. Two. Wow. Thought he might have had to go to the ropes there. So much damage I thought was delivered on that maneuver off the top. I mean, there, there have been several times in this matchup I was sure that Josh Alexander, especially the way I know Josh Alexander, I thought this match was closed out. I thought it was done and dusted. But Carl Fredericks has brought the fight back to Alexander at every single turn. Both men now back to their feet. Carl Fredericks first to an E here. Looking to reestablish a vertical base, looking for manifest destiny, perhaps. Alexander smartly holding onto the leg, countering that hold, not letting manifest destiny get manifested. Now trapped in the corner, Alexander. You see, you see just the way both men are moving. This battle has worn on both of their bodies. It's been a struggle for each man. The Irish whip counter reversed up and over. Fredericks now to the apron. It's Alexander swinging a miss, shoulder to the midsection. Fredericks inside. He's got him Two. here. Ooh. Beautiful kick out by Josh Alexander. The pace is picking up. Roll up again. Two. Almost catches him there. Catches the arm. It's Fredericks. The striking combination backbreaker there. Here we go, Manifest! Oh, oh blocked! Manifest Destiny blocked! Got close again. Carl still fighting at every churn. Oh! And look at the German! Plants him now! Oh, and this could be it. Looking for that C4 spike. Could it be? C4! Spikes him! Huge victory for Josh Alexander! What a battle, Ian. We talk a lot about who will contend for the strong open weight championship. Tom Lawler retaining here last week. Tom Lawler, the first and only. But Josh Alexander, don't blink, he's 5 0 in strong competition. If there's somebody, yeah, who yeah. could find a weakness to Tom Lawler, perhaps down the line, someone like Josh Alexander could. But right now, he's staring his opponent that he just spiked in the middle of that ring. And he's staring him in the eye. What a great effort by Carl Fredericks. Stepping into the ring with 
one of the best conditioned athletes in the world of pro, pro wrestling going today, hands down. Absolutely, absolutely. And for Carl Fredericks, you gotta like the fact you're right on the doorstep. Great sign of respect. Two incredible wrestlers. Great bout here in St. Pete. Your winner, Josh Alexander. Still to come, our huge main event, the USFJ Open Challenge. But coming up next, tag team bout, we will see Eddie Kingston and Fred Rosser take on Daniel Garcia and Fred Yehai. professional wrestling, but the results he's had cannot be argued. He has accelerated the career of Aaron Solo, has done the same for Nick Camarado. When others have failed them, QT has stepped up to the plate. And he is delivering with the factory each week on AEW, whether it is Dynamite, whether it is Rampage, Elevation, you name it. QT becoming a mainstay and a fixture with the factory. Carl, you know who we are, but you don't know why we're here. Carl, that was a hell of an effort against a world-class athlete like Josh Alexander. But the one thing I've realized in my 20 years in this industry is that effort, you're gonna need a little more than effort to get to the next level. Your problems don't start with these one-on-one -on -one matches and your failures to get the victory. Your problems began when you aligned yourself with the New Japan Dojo. And that overrated Senpai Shibata. Oh. Hey, whoa, hey, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen to me before you do something you might regret, Carl. The factory's here to offer you an opportunity, an opportunity to join the factory. I mean, look what it's done for Nick Camarado and Aaron Solo. I mean, Aaron Solo has, has wrestled in New Japan. In fact, he teamed with Hall of Famer Japanese legend Jushin Thunder Liger, but that... But what he's done in the factory has magnified his career to levels that you can only dream of. So Carl, what do you say? You wanna join the factory, Carl? Don't listen to these idiots, Carl. There's still time for you, Carl. Come join us. Carl's got a big choice on his hands. It's just your size, too. Look at that. Despite the I mean, demeanor. We, we've been planning this for a while, Carl. And the way they conduct business, which you can't argue with. You can't argue with their success in all elite wrestling. Come on, Carl. What do you say? What he said was absolutely true about Camarado and Solo. Others had failed them. Oh, look at this! Look at Fredericks! I think you got your answer, QT. Ducks the right! Fredericks! And Frederick charging it, caught by Camarado. 
The big man of the factory. Oh. The Alpha Wolf in the middle of the ring. Planting Fredericks down, and now Solo putting the boots to Fredericks. And the factory are here in New Japan strong. An offer refused. Oh, come on. That gold watch. And to do this in the middle of a New Japan ring is. Oh, is look at this! Low. Clark oh. Connors! Clark Connors! Yuya Uemura is here as well! And it's Uemura and Marshall! Plant Marshall! The LA Dojo Fight Club here to defend their honor, defend Shibata and everybody involved, the legacy that's been built here. And look at this, now the numbers don't benefit them. The factory retreating, and they got their answer. Carl Fredericks, a firm no for the factory. And look at this. Hey, look. I got zero interest in joining you stupid assholes, but I have a lot of interest in fighting you stupid assholes. So if you want it, Nightmare Factory versus LA Dojo, Windy City Riot in Chicago. What do you say? Uh, what do you say, baby, what? The challenge laid out. Good, QT Marshall. I don't care about you fucking nerds. I'm gonna beat the brakes off your ass. Huge words, fighting words, and a challenge laid down. And if I see, saw my monitor correctly, QT said, you're on. Windy City Riot, the factory, and the LA Dojo go to war. And that's one week from tonight. Join us on Fight. The factory taking on the dojo. And what a bout that's going to be. We'll get more details on NJPW Global on Twitter to see which members of the dojo, which members of the factory. So be sure to continue to check that out. Coming up next, though, fans, tag team action. Eddie Kingston, Fred Rosser, taking on Daniel Garcia and Fred Yehai. Tag team match here on tap here in New Japan Strong. Interesting combinations on both sides, Matt. This should be a very, very interesting one. On one side, we've got youth, we've got vigor, we've got the fire. Oh, this team, Fred Yehai, Daniel Garcia making waves all over the pro wrestling world. They are going to be going up a pair of pro wrestling veterans. And it's interesting, the stance, Daniel Garcia hasn't made many friends lately. Advocating for a certain style of professional wrestling that is not indicative of what you might find in New Japan, in, in Ring of Honor, in Impact, or of AEW, where he is a primary competitor there. Hey. You're not in this business to make friends, though. You're in this to get ahead.
tag team combination here. Excited to see what they can do. You know, Yehai's had success here in New Japan, strong teaming with Wither Yuta. Try, try, try that again. It's Fred Yehai. You're in on that too. Oh, yeah. Kozlov got me. <laughs> he got me. And we'll see if they can find quick chemistry. They will need it because they are taking on a man, the only man to score a pinfall here in New Japan Strong against the first and only champion, Filthy Tom Lawler. I'm talking about this man right here, Mr. No Days Off. Coming here to New Japan Pro Wrestling has meant so much to Fred Rosser over the last few years. He decided to make New Japan home, and he will be teaming with a wild card of a wrestler in this man. Real wild card of a man, too. The Yonkers native. And look at look at that intensity. And every bit of that Yonkers blood is boiling right now. And you saw him going right for Dan Garcia. Obviously, Eddie Kingston has been tying up with Chris Jericho as of late, who has now teamed himself up with the likes of Daniel Garcia on AEW television. And Kingston is having none of it. There's a couple of guys in pro wrestling that I, that I wouldn't say a coarse word about. Eddie Kingston. Mostly, I would do it out of respect. Eddie Kingston is one that I, I would have fear. I mean, this is just an unpredictable individual. Oh, yeah. Look at him. He's incensed already. And this is, I mean, we've, we've had grudge matches where there have been pretty intense conflicts. I'm talking about Dorada and TJP. I'm talking about Rocky Romero and Black Tiger. I, I mean, I would not. I would not put the beef in that category, but he's out here with the Tupac shirt acting like Daniel Garcia's biggie. Oh, that's right. As we start out with Fred Rosser and Fred Yehai. Big chop there, open hand. And Yehai, the savage weight from the great state of Iowa. Oh, God. Great amateur wrestler. But right out of the gate, just raining down stomps and strikes on Mr. No Days Off. Yehai has this incredible intensity, this incredible wrist striking ability too. Not to mention strength. But, but if there's anyone who's gonna match that, it's Fred Rosser. Rosser built like a real life action figure, you know? And, and that's amazing to say, because Fred Yehai has an incredible shape. If you saw Fred Yehai walking down the street, you would think, hey, man, that guy's a pro athlete. But Rosser just takes a condition to another level. And this is a man who takes fighting to another level. And Eddie Kingston. Mad King. Showing just how mad he can get. Going right oh, back oh, oh, oh. for Daniel Garcia. Staying on top of him. Sending him into the barricade on the outside. We need officials on the outside here. This is supposed to be a tag team competition. With due respect to Stefan Smith, I, we're going to need every official we got, I think, here. To maintain some semblance of order. And now Kingston, that gives Yehi an opportunity. And Kingston can, wow, a nice STO there. You know, you mentioned some of the names he's been in the ring with. I think back to, to Mox, to John Moxley on AEW, the great battles there, tag in, back to Rosser. And he, I mean, Kingston, I mean, even here in New Japan Pro Wrestling, teaming with John Moxley to take on Mike Archer, Suzuki. I watched those four have a street fight in Philadelphia that literally almost tore the house down. That's the type of environment that Eddie Kingston thrives in. Bringing back the feet to inflict more damage, that big body slam. Oh! Signature split there. Dropping that tailbone across the chest of the savage weight. Hooks the leg. One count there. You see in the back of your screen, Daniel Garcia talking smack to the king of sm talking smack. No. My God, oh, right in front, front, of us, in front of us. And it's Garcia and Kingston right in it's front a of us here. Battle between these two. And oh, oh, Kingston's he's fighting, fighting him. him. He's fighting him. And, and referee Stefan Smith. Credit to him, he is trying to keep this under control. It is no easy task. He is doing his absolute best. At, at, even Rosser in the ring just trying to, at, at, come on, like, let's, let's win this in the ring. 
get to the corner, we can do this right. But, but how smart of it was Daniel Garcia to have that happen? Because look how quickly the momentum and the tide turned. Yehi able to, to get the advantage. You're right. Nate. One might call it silly to, to goat Eddie Kingston into, into fighting you, but it caused the distraction. It caused him to get the advantage here. And then, yeah, when I first saw Daniel Garcia come onto the scene, I saw what, what an incredible grappler. A lot of respect for the bid, and he has completely turned a different corner the last several months. Different attitude from Garcia. But you know what? You know what? And people might chastise that, and I get it. It's not the same kind of respectful young man you saw break into this business with all his technical and problems. Kingston, look at that. But sometimes you got to get ahead. Sometimes the same thing over and over doesn't get you where you need to be. Garcia's trying something. He's becoming a new person. And he's standing out from the pack. Even though that might tick some people off. Proving successful in AEW, proving successful here as Yehi delivers there. Just that snap, that intensity of Yehi. Add that with all the strength behind each blow. And it's a bad place for Fred Rosser. Tag made, Daniel Garcia back in. Everything done with purpose with both Yehi and Garcia. Everything has its place and its place with precision. See, and this strategy has worked so far for Yehi and Garcia. Even, even, the, even the trash talking to Kingston, but the one thing they have to make sure now is that Rosser does not get that tag to Eddie Kingston. Because if Eddie Kingston gets to be the legal man in this matchup, oh hell, hell oh, it's going to break loose. Ooh, double clothesline. Sends Garcia and Yehi. And the tag speak made. of the mad king himself, speak of the human devil. Eddie Kingston, he is in here. Quickly, the numbers team. game has caught up. Do not envy the official here tonight. Stomping on the fingers. Credit to Yehi and Garcia. They turned that around immediately. I thought once Kingston got in, this would turn into a fireball. But they have sussed that out. They have snuffed out Eddie Kingston for the moment. Quick double team absolutely prevented any momentum he would have had coming in. Garcia unloading on Kingston here. Oh, oh, going to the head. Paying him back for what Kingston did on the outside in front of our table here. I can't go. Oh, I can't complain just because I like one guy less. Turnabout's fair play. Oh! Fired away with the chops. Very familiar sight in the New Japan Pro Wrestling oh. ring. Those kibashi like chops. Take to the midsection, yay high. Taking the most out of that five seconds that he has to get in and out. And now mount, oh, lateral press can't get it done. Cover again, pushing off, driving that forearm across the jaw. At least he's getting his money's worth on those covers. And just unloading back in the neck at Kingston here. Garcia, to his credit, in firm control. And hangs on to that wrist, makes the tag, keeps him in the blue corner here. Shot to the obliques and the shoulder. Front face lock here. Bringing Kingston back into the corner. Great control of the ring here. Something you know very well, Matt. Very accomplished tag wrestler in your own right. I mean, that this is this is one on one right here from Yehi and Garcia, who who don't have a ton of experience teaming together on their own, but they are making a great force right now. They're cutting the ring off. They've done it both with Rosser and now with Kingston. Kingston oh. follows him with a big knee to the midsection. Butterfly suplex, Lance Garcia. Does he know where he's at right now, Matt? Beautiful release, Butterfly. Kingston looking around him, trying to get his whereabouts, trying to get his bearings about him, looking for Rosser. And you see, you hear Rosser. He was making noise. There he is, tag made. Found the partner, Mr. No Day's off in with Yehi. Sends Garcia down. Just the right from Yehi. Snap power slam. When Rosser gets going, that's a train that's hard to stop. Great combination here. The open hands, the clotheslines, and Yehi trying to break it up. 
Scoop. Running power oh. slam. Cover one, two. And I will give Garcia and Yehai this. They have known where each other have been the entire match. Got to have eyes sometimes in the back of your head. With all the ins and outs of these tag team matches, saving your opponent, saving your partner rather from your opponent. As Jason oh. dropping Garcia high on the back of the neck. And Yehai, the legal man, Kingston in trouble. Ooh. Belly to back suplex there. Savage way snapping down Kingston. And look at the face. Look at the eye. Look in the eyes of Fred Yehai. Lighten up Rosser. We're going for a sleeper here. Hand to bicep grip. Almost nowhere to go for Rosser. He's fighting and clawing. He's fighting, yeah. He's not going to stop moving. He can try to get out of there as Yehai. Oh, wow. Follows through. It's a cradle. Oh, and Rosser. Oh. Two. Oh. Just so two. close. Oh, blocks the close line with one of his own, does Garcia. Right to that, that taped up shoulder and arm that you see. Back fist connects. Oh. And, oh. and one for Yehi. And Rosser. Hook him up. Plants him down. Hook the leg. Two. Got him. Once again, he is not done with Daniel Garcia. And Nick Kingston just wants to, to choke the life out of Garcia. Even, even his own partner is just trying to get some separation. Well, this unlikely alliance between Fred Rosser and Eddie Kingston pays dividends here tonight, Matt. Do you think this is the start of a beautiful friendship? I mean, hopefully it's the end of a horrible war for Daniel Garcia who's been on the receiving end of Kingston beatdowns since even before the bell rang in this one. Great victory for the two men you see there. Your winners here tonight, Kingston and Rosser. And fans still to come, our gigantic main event, US of J Open Challenge, Chris Saban. We know who it is. Going one-on-one -on -one against Jay White, a return contest should be electric. Shop Global. We ship worldwide. Why, buddy? You finished those Okada orders yet? Yeah, with the new Team Filthy shirt, Papi. Genius. Eso, mi gente. The stars of today and the legends of the past come together on your smartphone. NJPW Collection. 
pick up cards from special draft events. Use your collected cards to form your own faction or exchange them for limited edition special cards. Check in live from venues or remotely from home to get special tickets and items. Add all of New Japan Pro Wrestling to your collection now. NJPW Collection. And no mystery to this US of J Open Challenge. A couple of weeks ago, we saw on Impact Television this man stepping up to the plate. This man was a mentor to Jay White, helped Jay White find a place to live in the United States, helped Jay White get into Ring of Honor, followed his career through New Japan and into Impact Wrestling. It was a little over a week ago at the Multiverse of Matches, Chris Saban stepped into the ring. He stepped in there with the switchblade king switch himself, Jay White. Hell of a contest. Now we get a chance to go round two. And like you said, one of the first US of J Tour open challenges where we know the table was set beforehand. Makes it even more special to me, Matt. I was there when Jay White came from Japan on excursion in Ring of Honor. I, I saw Chris Saban and Alex Shelley take Jay White under his under their wing. Literally living in the house of Alex Shelley while he was on excursion here in America. Teaming 10 times in Ring of Honor as a trio or a quad. Chris Saban very excited about the successes that he saw the only Grand Slam champion in New Japan history. But at the same time, you wonder, is this, it's almost like it's your little brother. Is this the little brother that well, I wanted it, it is. to be? And there's been so much back and forth as of late. It's coming from Impact Wrestling, not only these two having some singles matches, Jay White taking on Alex Shelley, as well as, well as Bullet Club going into tag team competition with the reunited Motor City Machine Guns in recent weeks. There has been a lot of tension back and forth between all these wrestlers. The big story here is Jay White just truly feels, and I mean, hey, if you ask me, it's with good reason, has outgrown all these, all these mentors. All these mentors, all these teachers, all these people that, yes, he acknowledges, led him here, did something for him, but he has outgrown and he is far beyond anything that they have ever become. And sometimes that's a tough pill to swallow. I don't think jealousy is on the mind of Chris Saban. I think tonight in his return engagement, he wants to look Jay White in the eye and see if that spark, if that young man that traveled from Japan, the Kiwi, if that young man at that fire still burns. Oh, I mean, <laughs> it's hard to tell. I mean, the, the fire burns, but it is turned into a, a glowing confidence. The Colorado will tie up here. Jay White with the reach and the strength advantage. Obviously the experience oh. edge going to Chris Saban. Very clean, clean break. That, that, that's the King Switch version of a clean break. It was Alex Shelley who literally went on record and called Jay White that he thinks he, Jay White is currently the best professional wrestler in the world. And I think it would be hard to argue with that fact. Yeah, but I, take nothing away from that man, Chris Saban, who's been around the world and then some. Former Impact World Champion, multi-time Impact X Division Champion. So the tag team title, oh, look oh, at that. And already the first blood has been drawn on these knife edge chops. Blistered chest, that handprint of Jay White near the collarbone. Both of these men have had world championships. Both of these men have headlined events. <laughs> oh, and Saban looking for a test of strength. 
say this best shape Saban has been in maybe in his entire career. Same could be said about Jay great White. Feeling great. Hammerlock now. Oh, wrist lock. Trapping the arm. Yeah, despite Saban having the experience factor, been in the business quite a bit longer, I, I think it's a fair, fair statement to say both wrestlers are at some of the peaks of their career right now, as far as their injury ability. There you go, there you have it. There's the athleticism from Saban. Step over, arm drag. Whoa, oh. looking to take his head off. Jay White rightfully looking oh, for a oh. breather there. Certainly better than the alternative. Shot to the head. My God, we're like we said, this match, a return from the multiverse of matches where these two collided in the first place. Now we get to see them here. One week away, we will see the Windy City Riot. Wow. You are not going to want to miss that. An absolutely stacked card. Maybe we'll see the US of J tour return there, the Open yeah. Challenge return there, uh, live on Fight TV. Oh, come on. Mind games, baby. Nobody plays him better than Jay White. The world is his middle. Oh my God! Wow! You know the mind game stops sometimes when you get a good shot to the chest, and that's exactly what Chris Saban did there, delivering to the outside. Well, he knows Jay White so well. He knew how much fun, how arrogant he was getting about those games, so he took advantage of those. I'll give credit to Saban. And Chris Saban, wow! Onto the shoulder. And the man from Detroit, from the Motor City, Chris Saban. Oh! Getting a little payback for the opening moments of this matchup. Two. Rolling Jay White in. Breaking the count, Jay White immediately going back to the outside here. Smart move. And Saban following him back in. Nice fake out there, and it's catching the Oh! Hits him with a cannonball. Huge cannonball on the outside. This one is already broken down pretty quick. Oh, it has him on his shoulders here. Fireman's carry position. We're gonna throw him oh. almost. Looks like caught the ribs on the top of the barricade there. And we know, we both know how difficult it is with the bruise or broken ribs. Oh. Takes away your breath. Speaking oh. of which, oh! Six. First, you have the side of the ribs over the top of the barricade. Then that Russian leg sweep gets you in the back of the, all of that, uh, you know, affecting the midsection, the core. Breaks you down pretty quickly. Saban bringing Jay White back into the ring here. Dude, Saban's a guy who, uh, you know, if I'm not speaking out of turn, usually keeps it pretty clean, oh. dead center of the ring. Yes, indeed. Two. Ooh. But he's been bringing the fight on the outside, getting into the nitty gritty with Jay White here. He knows he's got to do that. He's got to take it to Jay White's level sometimes. Well, I think that speaks a lot to the respect he feels for Jay White, that feeling that, you know, the, the student has passed the teacher. You look at the accolades and they speak for themselves. But Saban knows the margins, the game of margins and the ways to attack like he's doing right here. Look at this, almost a double wrist lock. Pushing down on the neck. Jay, not in many places Jay White could go right here. Arm tied up, neck tied up with the leg of Saban. Gonna have to reach for the ropes with his foot. Good use of that leverage. As you see Saban now going to work the boot to the shoulder. Ooh. Delivering again. Looks like he's focused on that left arm. Looks at recently the left arm and the ribs. Kind of giving him two targets. That's a smart move too. We always talk about breaking down a body part, but if you can do two, you know, if you go to protect that arm, it opens up the ribs. You go to protect your ribs, it opens up your arm. That's the kind of next level psychology top wrestlers need. And no protection there as Saban oh. connects with 10 shots. <laughs> And Saban now sending Jay White to the center of the ring. Climbing all the way to the top, it's White who follows Saban in. 
And a smart move by Jay White. There is something this man has the ability to change a matchup any way, shape, or form, any way he's got to on the turn of a dime. Now to the outside, it's Saban. And Jay White. You know he's going to take advantage. Here on the outside, once again, nearly in front of us here. Oh! There's a few minutes ago, Saban was in front of control of White on the outside. You know White hasn't forgotten that. Looking to repay, repay the kindness. And when Jay White gets oh. vicious, there's few, there's few that can be more vicious than King Switch. And look at that, even just, just messing with the fans in firm control. This is the King Switch's, oh. The attitude, the confidence. Breaking the count again. Oh no, oh no. Huge belly to back onto the apron of the ring. Planting him down. And he's not done. Oh! Front suplex landing him right on its sternum first on that same spot. And Jay White, King Switch. Has completely turned the complexion of this matchup around. The drop of a hat cover. Two. Referee Jeremy Marcus. Taking a little bit of frustration out on the official. We've seen that before. It gives, it gives Saban a half second to deliver these shots in the midsection. Opened himself up there. Uh, Irish whip. Big back elbow. And just like that, the switch play turns it back around. Jay White. The speed, the speed and precision of Jay White. Trying to bring Saban back to his feet to inflict more damage he does. Plants him. Beautiful backbreaker. Hooking the leg. Two. You saw the way just pressing down all his weight on the shoulders of Saban, but Saban still had the power to kick out. And clutching that back is Chris Saban. And look at the, the grip, that S grip. And now swinging to the side. And now he's wearing him down. And he had some time. Let the people at home know. Let the people at home know just who's in control. Oh, come on. Trying to go out of the view of referee Jeremy Marcus. Beautiful. To you may not like it, but hey, that's a fact. I like the fact some people are foolish enough to do that right in front of the ref. Sometimes they get themselves disqualified. Doesn't mean it's still legal. I, I know. That's why you got to hide it. And White in control. As Saban tries to make it back to his feet. Shots to the midsection, but it's White delivering a clubbing blow to the back again. He does exactly what he needs to, nothing more, to get the advantage he needs. And Saban tried to preemptively block what he thought might have been a suplex, does again. Smart move, veteran move from Saban. Drop that center of gravity. Front face lock here, wrist lock. Saban connects. Don't you forget, Saban can strike with the best of them. Jim Kika, 10 minutes has passed. 10 minutes. 10 minute mark, both finely conditioned athletes here. Saban goes right through, huge kick upside the jaw of White, and it sends him to the mat. And just like that, you know, I talk about Jay White turning the complexion of this matchup so quickly, Saban just did that himself. And the match has reset here in St. Petersburg. Florida. We're so glad you joined us here. Our second week of the Strong Style Evolve Tour. Ian Riccoboni, Matt Raywald, it's our pleasure to bring you this main event bout. Jay White, Chris Saban back to their feet. And it's White who catches an elbow. Saban, waist lock here, back elbow connects. Saban, shot to the midsection. Ooh! Now the strikes. From the Motor City machine gun himself, Chris Saban, spinning around. Going back to that rib cage again. Like he said, multiple points of attack. The shoulder and the ribs. Oh! Swift kick to the chest. 
and action like this and more next week. Windy City Riot catch matches like Osprey and Moxley, Ishii, Suzuki. All that action and more in Chicago, but right now the main event of Strong is popping off. And what Jay White caught was a big time drop kick from Saban. Saban charging Ooh. in. Like a flag shining wizard. One, two, and wow. Just in time. White gets the shoulder up. He flopped over after that kick. I thought he was out. Looked like he hit the off switch. It certainly did. As Saban has himself back into this match. He's been the aggressor. He has the advantage here. Ooh! And that's uncharacteristic from Saban. Headbutt. That's always going to take out a lot of you as well as your opponent. Wow! Shot to the back of the head. Wow! Oh, and there's that snap DDT. Jay White is known to use that often. A little what's good for you. Like I said! It's good for the gander! You finished the thought just like they finished the thought. And now we're back to an even playing field. Back to square one as White making it to the ropes, trying to reestablish a vertical base. He does, charges in though. Saban connects with the boot. Second rope on the inside. It's Saban! Plants it! Tornado DDT! Hooks the leg! Two and three! Oh my! Was just about three. I mean, the ref didn't call it, so it wasn't three, but that was about as close as you can get. Wow. And Jay White able to find a way to kick out. But does he have enough to get back into this match? Can Saban maybe look for Cradle Shock? Maybe look for one of his high impact moves to put White away? crowd here in St. Petersburg, Florida. I agree, he was looking for that cradle shock right there. This is awesome though, between these two incredible pro wrestlers. Standing switch, Saban back elbow, nobody home. Whoa! Oh! Snap Saito suplex. Dropping Saban right in the back of his neck and that's, that's that precision from Jay White, that ability to just think on your feet and snap just like that. And what an all-out battle we're seeing here as White sizes him up, connects, running European uppercut. Wow! Twisting suplex, center of the ring. Hooks the leg, two and just a two count there. Nice tight cover, shows the respect he has for Chris Saban. Knows that if he's gonna beat him, he's gotta get him with not only his best shot and the tightest cover. Not only that, you force your opponent work to work extra hard to kick out. Now Jay White's got to compose himself. He's got to look for that finishing shot. Could be looking to set up that Blade Runner. Oh, and then he certainly was. As Saban trying to fight out of it now. What? Oh, Flatliner could be setting him up here now. Beautiful German suplex. And Saban is crumbled like a ball. Uh-oh. Uranagi. Hooks the leg. Got Two be. and three. Whoa! Wow. Two minutes Despite minutes. that incredible flurry of offense from Jay White, Chris Saban somehow, some way stays in this fight. And White is hitting. Say, oh, come on. Calling for that kill shot. He likes to set up the Blade Runner with that half and half. Saban knows it's coming. Fighting for dear life. Back elbows in the corner. Uh, running on adrenaline here is Saban. Might be running on fumes, but sometimes fumes will get you to where you need to go. Ooh, and these knees delivering in the jaw. Created whoa, separation. Whoa, whoa. Blade Runner, nobody home. Looking for the cradle shot. It's Saban, no, countered. Back and forth, look at that half and half. They do know each other so well. Boot to the head. Drops White to the floor. And does Saban have enough to get himself across the finish line and win in our main event here tonight? Exerted a ton of energy at this point. Both men have. They've absorbed so much damage here, Matt. The fact that, honestly, either one of them are still going. 
is a testament to who they are as athletes, as wrestlers, as men. Forearm delivers. It's a European uppercut from White. Charging it with an E. Ooh, White. Back down, trying to get himself back in this matchup. Maybe frustrated that he, in himself, that he couldn't put it away yet. Oh! And once again, you see the knees buckle, Saban. Another oh. chop collapsing the sternum of Chris Saban. And the relentlessness of Jay White. And that chest is welting purple at this point, Matt. Oh, God. He, he just, oh, and then White trying to get Jeremy Marcus out of the way. Jeremy Marcus trying to pull Jay White out of the corner of that five count. Oh, and Saban is up. Certainly is, connected with chops of his own. Saban delivers. And another. It is Saban. And Hughes trying to wear out the switchblade. Huge lariat turning Jay White inside out. Saban. The crowd comes alive here at St. Pete. Delivers a lariat on White. This could be setting up for Cradle Shock. You know he wants it. He has him. The legs are crisscrossed. Cradle Shock countered. Oh, Blade oh, Runner. Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Two, three. What a main event. And the US of J Open Challenge has the result that the man who issued the challenge was looking for, but there's no telling what kind of damage this match will leave on both the bodies of Chris Saban and Jay White. He is the man. He is the leader of the Polar Club, the man who sold out Madison Square Garden, the first ever Grand Slam champion in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And tonight, he has beaten Chris Saban in our main event. Next week, you, your Murrah Buddy Matthews, that is our main event right here on Strong. of business to talk about. Oh. Oh. Bullet club business, huh? Oh. A lot's happened since you all last saw me. You see, Bullet Club has been cutting the dead weight. And Maybe I'm not even done yet. <sighs> Who stays? Who goes, huh? Who stays? Who goes? I decide. And I think you're all gonna see exactly who lands on each side of the fence, whether it be with Bullet Club or not. Crosshairs of what's happened. Nikoleo, the younger brother of Tama Tonga and Tongaloa. 
It was earlier tonight. We speculated all about how Hikaleo felt about everything involving the G.O.D. getting ejected forcefully from the Bullet Club by that man, Jay White. It looks like we're about to get our answer. You know, in the early days of New Japan Strong, Hikaleo was Jay White's right-hand man. He was his tag team partner. Oh, 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 oh. he's stepping right oh. to King Switch. Okay. okay. I knew I was gonna have to have this conversation at some point. Your brother's time with Bullet Club had expired, but yours, yours has not. Yours has not. Think about who is the best in the world and who would you like? And who would you like to be standing with and next to? Because you are the future, the future of Bullet Club. What are you, 6'9", 275 pounds, the son of Haku, you are the future of Bullet Club. So, just trust me, listen to me, listen to all switch, and throw up, that's too sweet. What a decision he has to make here. the future yeah yeah there are levels to this even above your head no matter how high or big it seems to be growing right now Maybe I'll have to teach you that it's not quite your era. You want me to teach that lesson? I will teach it. You want me to open up those lungs for you, show you how to breathe? I will do exactly that. Because, yeah, the future is yours, but right now it is still mine. There is a lot to unpack, to unwind from the words between Hikaleo and Jay White. You asked for this. Is blood this thicker than money? Is blood thicker than that fame? That's the I'll question I have that. for Hikaleo. I'll make you see that. He has to live with whatever money. decision he makes. Don't hold it against me. You asked for it. But Jay White. Seems to be amenable to whatever path Hikaleo chooses. And if I read his statement correctly, he's leaving the door open for Hikaleo to show him what the future of Bullet Club looks like. He said he's the future, but today it is still Jay White's era. Well, fans, a heck of a night here tonight. 
in St. Petersburg. We thank you for joining us. Next week, Strong will be on the air. Our main event, Yu Yu Yamura versus Buddy Matthews. But Windy City Riot coming to you live from Chicago, Illinois. It's going to be a heck of a night. For Matt Raywalt, I'm Ian Riccoboni. Join us on flight next week for Windy City Riot, and we'll see you then.